Welcome to Kimber Bell's Fill in the Blank for September. This is called Peppermint Avenue. And what we're going to be making today is this adorable little bench buddy pillow. Isn't that so cute? If you hear some noise in the background, that's just my dog, Momo. And um, let's get started. Let's talk about what you're going to need, first of all. Uh, you're going to need your usual cutting supplies. Um, I have a point turner in here and some applique scissors. You're also going to want one of these. You don't have to use one of these, but this is a side hopper, and I love it because what this allows you to do is it allows you to get these really tiny little threads. I'm going to give you a little demo. So you can get, I call these little feet. So you can get one foot under here and then put it under here and just go ahead and clip it. Isn't that nice? So one foot under, one foot under here, and then you can clip. So um, it just makes cutting these jump threads. Your machine, most machines are going to cut, uh, they're going to cut the jump threads, but when they're really close together, they don't. Um just kicked little Momo out of the room. So, um, so now you see what this is for. I just, I really love this tool. Sometimes it doesn't cut super, super close to one of these. So I'll have to clip it a couple of times, but as far as jumping, uh, trimming jump threads, I feel like this is the best tool out there for it. So, um, it's called the side hopper. If you need us to get you one, we can get you one here at this store. All right, so I'm going to just put that to the side. You're going to, like I said, need your cutting supplies, a point turner. This is to hoop in and uh, tighten the hoop. Um, and I really love, for this project, I'm going to be using my snips, and I'm also going to be using my curved straight. So I'm going to put that to the side. I like to have my printed instructions uh, it does ask you to use a pop ruler, and this is a six and a half by eight and a half. Um, they sell them in sets, so either rectangular set or the square set. I have a rotating mat right here, a uh, ruler that I love. This is my six and a half by twelve and a half creative grids. Some needles. These are my anti glue Madeira needles, my favorite. And, um, you know, I have an array of other needles just in case I need them. This is on page. Let me see what page that's on. That's page number 10. There is a yo-yo template. So you need to cut that out. I've cut one out and well, I'm going to be using that to make the yo-yo. The yo-yo is this adorable little, I, what else do you call it but a yo-yo? It's a yo-yo that you stick on top and it makes it look really cute and dimensional. So you're going to need this cut out. Pins or wonder clips or both. You're also going to need a Teflon pressing sheet and an iron. Here's my iron. I have two irons. I really love my Panasonic 360 and then I love my Elisa. So I love them both. Um, it depends on which area of my sewing room I'm sewing at. And that kind of determines what I'm using. I use spray. This is a temporary spray adhesive. It's Ganold KK100. It is the best spray adhesive. I have some Best Press over here, and we'll use that too. You're going to need an array of color threads to embroider with. I also have some transport tape for holding stuff down. Um, I do use the Kimberbell tape, but I prefer this because I feel like it's so easy to rip, and it's super sticky. Your design on a USB you need bobbin thread in white, black, and red, so make sure you have that. A marking tool. You need a hand sewing needle. I know it looks like lipstick, but these are my hand sewing needles. And you need something that's going to have... Actually, I don't think the hole has to be that big. So just a regular hand sewing needle. We are going to be working in the 5x7 hoop. So I have my 5x7 hoop or comparable if you're not on a baby locker brother. Your kit is going to come with some uh, shape flex. This is a fusible woven. While I'm going through the rest of this, I am gonna turn my iron on. So go ahead and turn your iron on because we are going to begin with some fusing. And then you'll have this fantastic kit of fabric. Your stabilizer is just going to be a piece of no-show mesh that will fit in your 5 by 7 hoop. Um, the only modification to your kit is uh, you'll have a bigger piece of it than this, but this is that red topper that is going to be underneath 
his little hat so none of those stitches show through. So that, so don't lose your red topper. Yours at piece is going to be bigger, one and a half by one and a half. But I ran out of topper. This is all I have left. You're also, instead of having uh, in your instructions for the pole, so this is your pole right here. It called for a five by five piece, but you really only need one long skinny piece like this. So this is going to be your pole. So that's a modification. Um, this is my second time doing the project. I did do a dry run. Oh, wait, I do have topper. Look, here it is. Some random pieces. Um, this is left over from doing it the first time. So you got a piece of glitter that is going to be, I think it was like five by six or something like that. That's all I used. I used that for, because you're going to see you need snow here, 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 and here. Oh, look at I adhered a piece of little piece down here. Um, this is all I use. So if you play it smart with your piece of um, glitter, you're going to have plenty to do two or three of these. So, um, and then you are going to be using, this is your backing, your velveteen. Let's talk about velveteen. I have not used velveteen in a very long time. So what I had forgotten is, if you apply pressure to the seam, meaning if we sew these two pieces together and you apply pressure, it rips pretty easily. So you're going to have to be really, really careful with your velveteen. I had a blowout because I was, I do everything kind of aggressively. So I had a blowout down here. I re-sewed it and it came out fine. And then when I went to stuff it, I had another blowout right there. So you just want to be really careful when you're putting your pillow in just to make sure everything stays nice and secure. Finally, you're going to need your pillow blank. So the blank of the month is the nine and a half by five and a half pillow blank. But I think this would be an absolutely adorable pillow to blow up. So if you could blow it up, the next size up in pillows is going to be the 12 by 18, which is a fantastic size. So um, 12 by 18. I'd have to measure that out and figure out what this embroidery size would be because you're going to have a border on it too. So, and you get, I mean, if you're going to make your own pillow, you could do it any way. You could maybe create it so it's going to be long this way and add something adorable on one of the sides. So there are options, um, but I challenge you to remake this pillow and make it into something that's going to be even bigger. But let's go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if we look at our instructions, uh, this is going to be a two-part project. Uh, first part one is embroidering the peppermint av design. Part two is going to be sewing and assembling the pillow. So the first thing that we want to do that we want to do is we want to iron our Kimberbell fusible backing. In this case, in your kit, you have some shape flex to the wrong side of the background fabric and the pole fabric. So here is our background fabric right here. And before you go ahead and press this down, make sure there's nothing on the back side that's going to kind of show through. And you want to go ahead and take this. There is a bumpy side and a smooth side. Bumpy side goes towards the project. And if you use um, either, you can either use water or you can use best press. But it's going to adhere best if you go ahead and wet it. Make sure you're adhering the right side. If you have the glue side up, it's gonna stick to your iron. <coughs> Excuse me. And that should be good. I'm gonna give it a little press from the front side too. Might as well do it from both sides. I got a little wrinkle right here. If that happens to you, just pull them apart. Just like that. Just be careful how it's being pressed. So don't worry about that. Just give it... Okay, so that piece we can put to the side. 
Now we're also going to adhere it. And, I mean, do you really have to uh, put Shape Flex on the back of this? You really don't need to. I did not do it when I did this. But if you want to, you have another piece of Shape Flex. This is an inch wide. So just cut this down into one inch strips. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a little trim. Kind of close to the edge there. So, guess I only need two. I use all my shape flex. Um, if I have pieces, I know some of us can't be bothered, but I just hate the idea of throwing away good product and I will piece together stuff. that should be good. I have some of it exposed. So I'm not going to put my iron on it. Okay. We are set and ready to go. This step is done. Um, you want to go ahead and remove the plastic film from your snow glitter, your snow glitter. Some of you have, uh, there's a couple different glitters in your pack. Um, some of you, it, it is a vinyl fabric. Or you're going to have this right here. I'm going to take a little bit of tape and get all of those fuzzies. That velveteen totally sheds, so it might get on stuff. But I already pulled my plastic sheet off. If you didn't pull your plastic sheet off, you want to do it right now. You don't want to accidentally forget about it and embroider with the plastic sheet on. It's not going to make a huge difference, but you kind of want to pull it back. So I like to pull it towards the plastic sheet side bend the corner, and then it kind of separates pretty easily. Um, step C, we're going to cut a piece of no-show mesh. Yours is already pre-cut. Um, and then cut a piece of Kimberbell light cutaway stabilizer, larger than the hoop. So ours is already done. We're not going to hoop it yet because we are going to go ahead, mark our background fabric, and we're going to attach it to our stabilizer, and then we're going to hoop it. So let's go ahead and get ready to do that. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to step two, which says mark the center of the fabric using a water-soluble or heat-sensitive pen. And then we're going to tape background fabric to the center. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our fabric. And we are just going to go ahead and, you know, you could use your water-soluble pen. I'm just going to go ahead and press my marks in. So I'm just going to go ahead and finger press the center here and the center here. You can see that line. A lot of times if I can get away with just finger pressing, then I'll just do that instead. And then we're going to grab our stabilizer and we are going to go ahead and just tape it down to the center. That red fuzz from the velveteen kind of gets on everything. And I'm just going to center it on the stabilizer so it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. And then it wants you to go ahead and tape it on the left and the right side. I'm gonna put one piece here, all the way on this side, and one piece here, all the way on this side. Then it says hoop fabric and stabilizer with the center mark in the center of the hoop. So your hoop has great markings on it. Our, most of them should have this. So you can see my big old center mark here and then my horizontal center and my bottom vertical center. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and I'm just going to go ahead and get those center marks on the center marks of my fabric. And that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit. And I'm just going to push the top down first. I'm going to loosen this a little bit more. Let's go ahead. Pull that out. Pull that out. 
and we are pretty darn centered. So before I tighten it, I'm just gonna go ahead and gently pull up. There's not a ton of fabric, but gently pull up and try and get out most of those bubbles. Go ahead and pull up on our stabilizer a little bit too. I like to hand tighten, and then you can take your hoop tightener, slip it on here, and just tighten it a little bit more. And that should be good. All right, we are ready to go on to step 2D, which is to load the desired embroidery file into the machine, and we will start our embroidery. I'll meet you over at the machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up our design. And if we look at our machine, I have my USB in there. I'm on a luminaire, so I'm going to hit my pocket, go to my USB, and then I'm looking for Peppermint Avenue. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up, hit set, and embroidery. I'm going to start off with just a, a white bobbin. So let me go ahead and put that in. And as far as colors go... Um, change thread to your desired color. Uh, the first color you're really going to see is probably going to be the red. So I'm going to go ahead and put my red thread in right now. And we're going to be doing a whole bunch of applique. If you've never done applique before, it is super fun. It's kind of like coloring with fabric. And they give you a little outline to color in. I'm going to slide on my my embroidery hoop. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to do a placement line. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that placement line. This is going to tell you where the uh, where the pull is going to go. While it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and give this a little shot of spray of that KK Ganold on the back side. Do not spray at your machine. You should have maybe like a spray box or something next to your machine. I'm going to slide this towards me and make sure you're covering your entire pole outline. Nice and easy. Slide it back on. And now it's going to do the tack down stitch. So we are on this step right here. Change thread to desired color, stitch the pole tack down. Remove tape, if you need to, you can tape it down. I always spray and put it down. And then we're gonna get our scissors and we are gonna trim fabric close to the stitch line. So I'm gonna use my snips to do that. And like I said, I think it's fine if you don't put the shape flex on. I think my sample, I didn't put the shape flex on. But the shape flex is just going to give it a little more body. And it'll make sure that nothing is showing through on the white. So sometimes you want to use it so you don't get any shadowing. Especially if I was using like a really dark fabric as my background color. There we go. And slide it back on. And let's look at our instructions. It says right here, stitch the pole decorative outline. So it's gonna do some little decorative stitching. I'm just gonna leave the red in and I'm gonna hit start. Let's get this big old thread out of the way. And then it says change thread to desired color. You're gonna stitch arrow one placement line. So your first arrow is gonna be in red. I'm just gonna leave that same red in there. And I'm looking for a piece of red leather. I 
I have so much red leather leftover. So this is my bag of scraps. These are all Kimberbell scraps from Kimberbell Projects. So I'm just gonna pull stuff out of here, but you should have a piece of leather in your kit that looks something like this. This is what you're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this because I have this leftover from something else. But save those scraps, they'll come in handy. Okay, we are in step five, which is to stitch the arrow one placement line. I'm just gonna hit start. And I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray to the back. Don't spray too much because it soaks through the leather for some reason. And I'm just gonna put this down here. When you put this on, you wanna make sure that you leave yourself some room, at least an eighth of an inch around it to do your trimming. So I'm just gonna put that on here. And then step 6A says, place arrow one leather right side up, completely covering the placement line, tape in place. Be sure tape is outside the stitch area. So I used a little spray adhesive. I'm just gonna hit start. And then you're gonna trim as desired. And anytime I hear trim as desired, I like to use my curved straight scissors. These are made by Fomori. I feel like everyone has to have those in their collection. And I'm gonna trim it with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So not right to the stitch, but close. A lot of times I'll just try and trim things right in the hoop, but if I have to do a lot of turning, then I slide the hoop off the machine. But I am pretty lazy and I like to leave it in the hoop if, if I can. not in the hoop, but I like to leave it on the machine if I can. And I like it not to look totally perfect. Be careful you're not accidentally cutting the pole underneath the pole fabric. And there we go, isn't that cute? All right, I'm gonna slide my hoop back on the machine. And the next step is, um, what we just did right now was we stitched the arrow tack down, then we trimmed the leather as, uh, as desired. We are on to step A, and step A says change thread to desired color and stitch arrow to placement line. You're looking for your little pistachio piece of felt. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I'm gonna change my thread out. I'm gonna be using this color right here. So let me change out my thread. And let's go ahead and get threaded up. This would be a great embroidery to add to something else too. I like 
I love their embroidery designs because they're so versatile. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. Here is my piece of felt. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray to the back. I'm gonna center this pretty much in the middle. And let's go ahead and hit start. Now we're gonna tack it down and then we're gonna trim it. Trim as desired. And there's, uh, Kimberbell just came out with some new colors of felt. There is prickly pear. I think um, one of them, is it grapefruit? Be careful when you're trimming this that you're not trimming anything underneath that shouldn't be trimmed. Slide that hoop back on. Next arrow that you're gonna do is in that pink leather. So uh, do your placement line. I picked a pink that's gonna be a little bit darker. The color is gonna be a little bit darker than the pink leather, so you'll see that. You could go really dark. You can choose high contrast. You could, you can do whatever you want. All right, let me go ahead and get this in. in just a sec. I don't know why that just threaded it and it felt like absolutely no tension on the top so I'm just going to re-thread again. You know if it feels right or not. Okay placement line first. piece of leather. I'm going to see if I can um, stretch this out to work for two of these. So let me go ahead. So I'm going to try and stitch it down here near the bottom and then hopefully I'll have room on the very top to do another one. Right, hopefully you'll have enough to do two of these. You might have to provide your own background fabric or something like that, but these pieces are generous.
just threw that big old scrap into my Kimberbell scrap bag. And if you want to cut it closer than I cut it, you can do that. Looks pretty cute. I'm going to go ahead and slide my hoop back on. Next step is going to be for the pistachio, I'm sorry, not the pistachio colored uh, leather, but this um, toasty brown, the gingerbread, uh, the gingerbread felt. So let me go ahead. I'm going to do the placement line. This color, I love this color. Kind of my go-to. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray. Make sure this part is pretty much centered because you need extra room to trim those points. Let me flip that back and that looks good. The front point, good. Okay, now I'm gonna tack it down. And then we're gonna trim as desired. That's a little bit close to get like that really nice point on your arrow, but I think I can make it work. Slide that back on. And now it wants to do the snow. So I'm going to put my white thread in. And you're going to get your white glitter. Okay, here is the placement stitch first. And get your white piece of glitter.
Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little spray and I'm gonna use this edge right here. Um, it's gonna stitch that very top one, so I do need a little piece for up there. Let's go ahead and give it a little shot of spray. I don't know if you could hear that. You, you could barely hear anything coming out. And I'm gonna put it right there. Once it stitches that one part and it cuts the thread, I'm gonna hit my stop button. That way I can position it for the next piece. And if you wanna throw down your whole piece and just stitch it all down at once, you are welcome to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. And again, we wanna go, um, like an eighth of an inch away. And be mindful of the fabric underneath that you're not cutting it. Or scratching it up. Is that adorable? So cute. Okay, let's put our next piece on and it's gonna be right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this little corner a spray right there because I think that'll fit on there. Here we go. Whoops. Sorry, I was focusing in on my hand. Let's see what happened there. My thread broke. All right, I'm gonna go right here and here, and I'm gonna go back 10, and then I'm gonna hit it until it goes all the way back to the other part. So I'm like, and once it goes to the last part that I was at, then I'll hit plus one, and that'll be my first stitch there. Let's go ahead and re-thread. I don't know why that broke, but, or why it came unthreaded, but it did. Go ahead and pull that out. And again, don't forget to pause it or hit the stop button so it doesn't just go to the next patch of snow before you trim. I'm going to put my foot up, slide it out, and let's go ahead and trim this part up right here. I mean, look how big this piece of glitter is. You're going to have so much room. Now we're gonna do that little patch right there. Slide my hoop back on, grab my snow, look for a good spot. I could use this part right there. I'm gonna go ahead and Let me make sure I have that high enough. I have it plenty high. Get ready to hit your stop button. 
and then it's gonna sew on that last big chunky piece down on the bottom. And you're gonna have to put your foot up, slide it out, and go ahead and trim it up. You could probably do like four of these with all this glitter, if not five. All right, I'm gonna slide that back on. Let's get our piece of glitter, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just do my bottom piece. This is gonna fit pretty perfectly, I think. I'm gonna check it here and check it here, and it looks good. I'm gonna spray that, and then we're gonna stitch it down. And just go right to the top of that. Let me check my sides and go this way. I'm just gonna go for me an eighth of an inch down, and that way I don't have to trim that bottom edge. Let's pull my curl back and let's stitch it down. Your kids either have this HTV or they have a uh, fabric glitter in there. Um, so regardless of what you have, like this I am going to press down. Um, do we even need to? I don't think we're even going to do that. I don't even worry about it. We're gonna trim as desired. And then we're gonna move on to the little birdie. And there we go. We are done with our snow. I'm going to go ahead and slide that back on. And now we're going to go on to this step. So what we just did here was uh, step 10, A through D. Now we're going to change, change thread to desired color. We're going to stitch the bird leg. So I'm going to use this real kind of like golden, gold yellow color. It's one of my favorite colors. It is color 3257 from Polyfast. I should grab some of this because it is spectacular. So it is going to do his two little leggies. If I can get this to come through. What's going on here? 
somehow we are knotted. Let's make sure we can get that out. And I'm gonna redo that. There we go. Little legs. After this, we're gonna change the color to the desired color and stitch the bird body placement line. Your bird is going to be stitched out in this, this robin's egg blue. I'm gonna pull from my scraps and I'm gonna use this piece right here. But first of all, let me get the right color put in. I have this really pretty teal. It's a little bit darker than uh, the color of the leather, but I like that because there's a little bit of contrast. guy I'm just gonna kind of hold this down start so now we're doing the body stitch down which is 13 B and then we're gonna trim it and he's a cute little bird he wears a hat and everything Trim him up. Okay, let's look at our instructions. We are moving on to page eight. And now we're gonna change thread to the desired color and stitch the hat embroidery topping placement line, which is gonna be red. So I'm gonna put my red thread back in. And we're six minutes, can you believe it? This is only a 12 minute stitch out. Um, I've been filming for 49 minutes. I know part of that was me going over the supplies, but uh, when you're doing applique, it takes a lot longer than the actual stitch, stitch time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. That's gonna do the placement line for your topping. And what you're looking for is you're looking for that little red piece of, uh, it's like almost like plastic. So you're gonna look for this. I use this for the last hat, and that's all I use. So if you place it right, you can go ahead and probably do like four hats with this. So I'm just gonna put it right here and then it's gonna stitch it down. So the whole point of this um, permanent topper is that you're not gonna be able to see any dead space. So if you've ever done a fill and then you could see some of the fabric behind it, that's a good time to use some of this topper. I didn't even tape it down, but if you taped it down right now is when you're gonna remove your tape. And then I like to try, try to pull this in towards the embroidery. You're just gonna 
pull this away it'll just rip right away look how cute that is and the fill is perfect and it has texture to the hat so it's super adorable and you can't see any of the fabric underneath it so I'm gonna go ahead and let me trim this thread too while I'm at it and next thing it wants to do is it wants to um, change thread to the desired color and you're gonna stitch the hat outline so I did my outline in red as well, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. And I'm just noticing that I'm not threaded. So let's go ahead and get this threaded. And let's hit start. It only did two stitches, so I didn't start it over again. It's a little thick there, so if you hear something, that's okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and change your thread to the desired color and stitch the bird wing fill and outline. So I'm gonna change it back to that teal, the one that I did the tack down in. So here's my teal, let me go ahead and put that on. The afternoon sun is streaming through my window. That's distracting, I'll go shut it. Let me pull that little tail and I'm gonna hit start. So it's gonna do the wing and it's also gonna do a little fill. Next color we're gonna need is the color for the beak and I'm gonna use that same golden yellow color that I have. take that out let's put the gold back in there's 27 color changes or stitch outs I know some of them were like red right after red right after red hit start it's gonna do the little beak and then we're gonna do the eye so I'm gonna grab my black thread next And then we're gonna do the little pom-pom. If you've never done um, frill before, the little loose tassel-y things, they're super fun. They can be a little challenging because you have to cut the right bobbin thread on the back side. doing his little eye. We are in step, step 18C. Is he just adorable? I'm gonna give that a little trim. Okay, this is important. So we are on step 18D and it says change bobbin thread to visible color change thread to desired color on the top. Just make sure you don't do a pink and a pink. I'm gonna go ahead and change out my bobbin thread and I'm just gonna put a red spool in there um, so I can see it when I go to cut it. So let's get my red. Oop, I can tell that's not even in my bobbin tension. Did you see that? It's going right there. That should not happen right like that should be in the bobbin tension right here sorry if it wasn't focusing where it needed to be okay for the top we're doing a pink pom-pom so i'm gonna go ahead and put pink in the top and let's stitch out that pom-pom you're also gonna need a seam ripper so go grab a seam ripper Uh, 
And here we go. Pom pom time. What we're doing is we're creating this little pom pom where you're gonna have the little frills up there. I didn't get the whole thing released because I had a tough time seeing my bobbin thread in the back and I just wanted to not cut it by accident. So hopefully this one will go a little better and I can, oh, look how cute that is. Do you see how adorable that is? Okay, let's look at our instructions. So if you go ahead and open this up, and we're gonna go to the next page, what it says, and this is step 19. It says, turn hoop to the back. Using Kimberbell sharp scissors or a seam ripper, I'm gonna use a seam ripper, Carefully clip bobbin stitches on the large satin stitch of the fringe pom-pom. Be careful not to cut through the smaller inside satin stitch. So right where you see that little line, that's where you're going to be cutting. Let me grab, let's, let's get this. Let me grab this. I'm going to turn it to the back side. And I used red thread, so you can really see that well, but you still need to be careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in the red, and that is what you're cutting is the red thread, or whatever color you used. That's gonna be different than the pink, so you can see it. And you wanna be careful, just do a little bit at a time. See this for right here, right, for some reason right here is always like a little hard. That's where I had trouble. Ooh, I don't want to go through all of that all at once. Okay, this right here is where I had trouble on my other one. So just be careful. I'm going to turn it to the front side. On the front side, I like to use the back of my seam ripper. I'm just going to put it in here and just kind of pull these loops up. I don't want that red coming through. You might just grab those and try and pull them out. I need this right here. I don't know if I got these. If you don't feel like you get them, you got them, you have to go up to the back side again. I don't want these red threads. I don't want those red threads in my pom pom. I think I did a better job getting them. That red shows. I'm gonna trim that later. But I think I got most of it, didn't I? Got most of my pom-pom. I'm gonna come back through with my scissors and get that red thread out of there. Is this, did I leave a thread? You don't want to get too greedy and go for it too hard because you don't want to cut all of those little pieces. But I'll come back in here with a little pair of scissors and I'll get that little red thread out of the way so you won't see it. But pretty cute, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to slide that. Whoops, just hit all my thread. I'm going to slide this back on. We're going to change our th thread. So I'm going to change this back before I forget. I'm going to change that back to my white. And it says uh, change thread to desired color and stitch out candy cane lane. So the candy cane lane is in white. So I'm going to use my white bobbin thread. But when it comes to the black print and the red print, I'm going to do those with matching bobbins. The print's really small. It's really fine font. And sometimes when you're doing really fine font, that upper, th that bottom thread might pull a little bit. So that just happens. And if 
your fabric started buckling a little bit, take your time to fix it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put white thread in and it's gonna stitch out candy cane lane. So let me do that. And then after candy cane lane, it's gonna stitch out reindeer petting zoo in black. So you have your black pre-wound bobbin ready and your black upper thread. That thread split for some reason. Let me go ahead and redo that. And you could, um, this is a time where you could go ahead and you could use a 60 weight thread if you wanted. Sometimes that makes it look better. But I thought this stitched out pretty, pretty looked pretty good with uh, just the regular 40 weight thread. So I'm just gonna leave it. to take this time to tidy up a little bit and then we're gonna get ready to uh, stitch our yo-yos While this is finishing up, I want you to go ahead and grab your fabric that looks like this. It should be three and a half inches by three and a half inches, and you're going to grab your little template. If you look at your instructions, okay, that's done. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change out our bobbin thread to black. So let's go ahead and slide the hoop off the machine. And let's pop out our bobbin. I'm going to put my black one in. This is a black, mine is a black pre-wound bobbin. So I use Filtech pre-wound bobbins for the most part. I do use some deco bobs too. Um, but that bobbin thread is gonna be lighter than of course your regular embroidery thread. And now it's gonna stitch out reindeer petting zoo. If you want, a lot of times uh, people might use a topper because it's stitching into felt. They didn't call for it in the pattern or in the instructions, so I didn't do it either, and I thought it looked fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching this. And while it's stitching this, let's go ahead. So you just put in a matching black bobbin. We're gonna turn to page 10. 
And right here, we're doing this step. Use a water-soluble pen and trace your yo-yo template on the wrong side of the yo-yo fabric and trim your fabric around the shape directly on the outline of the circle. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna kind of hold it down. You can pin it if you want. And I'm gonna use a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna cut it out. And this is how I did my other one too. I thought it looked fantastic. If you feel like this uh, is moving on you too much, by all means, trace it. There we go. There's my round yo-yo. I did mine with white thread, so I'm just going to get a needle and thread, and I'm going to put some white thread on it. If you've never made a yo-yo before, they're super fun. I'm just using the embroidery thread that I used before, and I am cutting, I don't know, 20 inches, something like that. Just gonna cut it. I'm gonna grab a, a needle. You don't need a huge one with a huge eye. This is left over from before. Okay, before I start sewing that, we are gonna be doing this stitching right here on the uh, pink arrow. And if we go back to page nine, that is going to be step C. So change thread to desired color for North Pole. I am gonna change my bobbin thread out too, so I'm gonna put red in my bobbin. You just know it's gonna look great if you do this. So I would recommend, I'd highly recommend that you do put that in just like that. I'm going to slide my hoop back on and let's change my upper thread out to red. Alrighty, and just go ahead and hit start. I'm gonna change my angle over here a little bit so I can sew my yo-yo. And we'll just do it like this so you can see both. So I'm gonna grab my thread here. I'm gonna find the end. And I'm gonna thread this. go. What I like to do is I'm going to match up both my ends. I know that's hard to see. And I'm going to take the ends pointed to the right. I'm laying my needle on top of it perpendicular. I'm going to wrap it around twice. I'm going to pinch it right here and I'm going to pull straight up. That's going to give me a double knot. There we go. You might have to pull it a little bit just to clean it up if you wanna trim off those ends so it's nice and neat. And there's my double knot. Okay, this is what we do to do our yo-yo. 
says right here, using a needle and thread, hand sew a running stitch around the circle approximately one eighth from the edge. And then you're gently gonna pull the thread to gather the circle into a yo-yo with right side out. So I'm gonna do this on the back side because you'd want your knot to be on the back side. And they just want it to be about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna go right in here. That's about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just gonna have my fabric go, or my needle go in and out. And I'm probably going about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, a quarter, in between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. So you're just gonna take this and just go back and forth, in and out, around the outside edge. So just about an eighth of an inch inside from the edge of your fabric, okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull this through. Make sure your thread doesn't get all tangled up. And you want to make sure you put the knot in the wrong side so it doesn't show. Mine's a little uneven, so I'm going to pull it even. Okay, and then I'm just going to keep going. So about an eighth of an inch all the way around, just like this. Okay, while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and change my thread out, and we're gonna do the last arrow. And the last arrow is going to say, hot cocoa, and it's in white. So I'm gonna change my upper thread. Let me change it to white on the top. And we're gonna change the bobbin out too. I have a red bobbin in there right now. I'm gonna change it out to a white bobbin. Let's go white. I absolutely love these. I forget what these are called. We have them in the store though, but when I'm just like doing a class and I'm trying to get organized, I just love this because I can just pop all the bobbins that I'm using for that project in here and it keeps it all pretty neat and tidy. So I'm gonna slide this back on and let it stitch out hot cocoa. And while that's stitching, I'm gonna continue sewing my yo-yo. Where did I leave off? Okay. My kids are deprived, I think, because um, I'm not a big hot cocoa fan, so I never, not that they haven't had hot cocoa, because they definitely have, and I always buy it, but then nobody ever makes it, because I forget. I can't even believe I said they're so deprived. They're so spoiled. <laughs> they're so deprived because they didn't get hot cocoa. I don't know if I ever had hot cocoa as a child. It is uh, not something you grow up with as a Korean. Make sure you don't go through those threads, but I like to maybe overlap it one stitch, but don't sew through those original threads. Okay, so we are done with our embroidery, and this is what you should have for your yo-yo. What you're gonna do once you made your stitch go all the way around, is you are going to gently pull your threads to gather the circle into a yo-yo with right sides out. Take a few stitches through the center of the yo-yo, uh, stitches through the yo-yo center. So this is what it's gonna look like. The side that you're gonna gather is gonna be the front side, okay? So as you gently pull this, you wanna make sure you get everything in the center.
and kind of put your thumb in there and pull your stitches around. And play with your fabric a little bit just to get it looking good. Oh geez, is that not so cute? And you can sew, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sew right across here. How cute is that? And I'm gonna go in here across that way and we kind of bury it over here just want to hide those stitches you don't want to see those stitches everywhere and once you have it done your yo-yo looks good leave it leave it like this because we're actually going to sew it down so you don't want to undo your thread right now but we're gonna sew it down to the fabric. So leave your yo-yo like this, leave it still threaded and attached to the needle and just put that to the side. And let's look at our instructions. It says, um, hand sew yo-yo to the top of the pole on the pillow front. It's done stitching. Oh, you know what? This is why, I, so I, I kind of jumped ahead because I wanted us to be doing stuff while it was stitching. So we are on this step with the embroidery. Uh, we went ahead and finished here, and now we are on step number one right here, which says part two, sewing and assembling the pillow. So we're gonna go here before we sew the yo-yo onto our, um, before we sew the yo-yo on, we're gonna go right here. All right, now that we have finished our embroidery, the directions say right here, um, remove project from hoop. So let's go ahead and do that. You're going to want to visually center the embroidery design using the five and a half by eight and a half orange pop ruler. Place inner edge of ruler against bottom trimmed edge of glitter. So let me grab my pop ruler. And it wants you to line up the bottom edge. Here's the bottom of edge of your trimmed glitter with uh, the inner edge of the ruler. So we're going to line that up with this inner edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to visually center my design and make sure there's an equal amount on the left and the right. And I'm not, well, you know, actually, I'm pretty good at visually, visually centering. But I also like to use a little ruler. So I'm going to grab one of my square rulers. I love my four and a half by four and a half inch ruler. And I think my leftmost point is probably going to be uh, this little arrow here. So I am an inch and an eighth. And this here looks like my rightmost position. So an inch and two eighths. That's an inch and two eighths, and that is an inch and two eighths. So I am going to go ahead and move this a little bit to the left, but barely. Now I'm an inch, inch and an eighth, and apparently it looks like I didn't move it at all. I mean, I'm so close. That should be enough. I just gave it a little bit of a nudge. All right, so what it wants us to do next is visually center, which we did, cut the sides and bottom of the block shown in blue. So we're gonna cut here, here, and here. Um, beginning at the edge closest to you, insert rotary cutter into the extended corner channel and carefully cut against the edge of the ruler. The first time I ever used one of these, one of these um, pop rulers, I thought, I decided they were the worst things I ever used because I was not holding my rotary cutter in the right spot. So you want to, when you cut using one of these, you're going to start down here in the little slot and you're going to give a little pressure to the left to make sure that you're staying 
against the edge of the ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut this edge, this edge, and this edge. I love this rotary, uh, my rotating mat. I'm going to go ahead and swing it. It's just super smooth. I'm going to cut this edge right here. And then I'll cut this final edge right here. And, you know, you want to keep your hand where the ruler is. So if you have to walk it up a little bit, that's fine too. So we went ahead and we cut left, bottom, and right. Let's see what it says in our instructions now. Remove the embroidered block from the orange pop ruler. The block will now measure approximately six and a half by eight inches. So I'm going to take it out of here. If you didn't get all the way through, that's okay. Just go ahead and... Give it another little cut, right all the way through here. And then this part right here, you can just all the way up. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away. Then it says, um, trim a quarter inch from left and right sides of the block shown in red. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's trim a quarter of an a quarter inch. And I can put my quarter inch mark for my ruler right on this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way up. So we're getting rid of another quarter inch. We'll cut this one a quarter inch. All right, let's go ahead and turn to the next page. And here it says, measure up seven and one, one half inch from the bottom and trim off excess at the top of the block. The block will now measure six by seven and a half. So I'm gonna measure seven and a half from the bottom. So we're gonna go, here is my seven and one half inch right there. I'm gonna line it up with the very bottom. And I'm gonna line one of my lines, like I'm lining my quarter inch with the edge to make sure everything is squared up and it looks great. And now I'm gonna go ahead and slice up. Again, I am at seven and a half here. There's eight and a half, nine and a half, six and a half. So I know I'm at the right spot and I'm just gonna go ahead and I moved. So let me go ahead and do that one more time. Make sure everything's lined up. And we'll cut that off. Okay, and that looks absolutely beautiful. So we're ready to put it all together. Our uh, embroidered piece right here is cut down. Um, the block will now measure six by seven and a half inches. We're gonna arrange our border pieces as shown with right sides together. We're gonna sew the border pieces onto the top and the bottom of the pillow center using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you get that quarter inch seam allowance because you just don't want to be too close to the edge on this uh, sateen. It will rip. And I did the best job I could squaring these up and cutting them. But I got to tell you, the sateen was just a little, I mean, not the sateen, sorry. Your velveteen was just a little bit wonky. But get it lined up the best you can. Um, some of the pieces weren't quite uh, six you know, 12 inches all the way across. I got these directly from Kimberbell. So do your best with it. I'm gonna not be using pins. I'm gonna use Wonder Clips. I'm just a Wonder Clip kind of girl. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin these down. Compensate the best you can if you need to. I already have my machine. I know these are, people always go, you know, your wonder clips are upside down. I just throw them on because I'm pulling them as I'm sewing pretty close. Um, see, I'm not quite to that edge over there. Do 
do the best you can, ladies. Okay, I'm going to go to my machine and sew this on with a quarter inch. I, um, I, what was I going to say? I've already put red thread in my upper and my lower. I am just going to do a straight center stitch. I'm at 2.5. I'm going to set it to 2.0. I'm hoping that'll hold everything together. I know this is a little thick for that, but I like my stitches nice and tight. And I'm going to put on my quarter inch sole because it wants a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. And let's go ahead and start stitching. There is, on these dual feed feet, there is no, uh, let me get it right there. There's no, um, little slit in the foot to kind of slot your, slot your thread back into. I feel like my velveteen is not right on the edge, so I'm trying to tickle it down a little bit. I'm going to stretch this a little bit. I'm going to back stitch over this. A lot of times I don't back stitch over stuff that's right near the edge that's going to kind of get sewn down into the next seam. Um, but you do want that to be as far over. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start my stitch in a little bit, like not right at the edge. Okay, here we go. I don't do a lot of back stitching with my dual feed because I think it's uh, it is um, it can be dangerous because um, you're not supposed to really back stitch. Sometimes I will. You can disengage and engage your. There's a little lever there. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron and give this a little press. Press it from, I wouldn't press it at super high heat and you might want to even press it from the back side because the velveteen kind of flattens if you iron directly on it. So be careful with your velveteen. I'll meet you over at my iron. Okay, so I'm here at my pressing area. I'm going to give this a little shot of spray from the back. And I'm going to give this a little tug as I... Press it this way so that it lays nice and flat. I'm gonna do the same. Now, if you press it from the front side, I'm gonna give this a little. If you press it from the front side, you're definitely gonna need a Teflon sheet just so that um, so that your iron doesn't stick to any of that specialty fabric and keep in mind you have that leather and as soon as you touch your iron to your leather, it usually scars it. So you wanna be really careful with that. 
that looks good just like that I'm not going to go crazy and I'm I'm actually not going to press it from the front side I did that before and I felt like it squashed and flattened my velveteen so um next step in our instructions is going to be this one we already made our yo-yo if you haven't made your yo-yo now uh or yet just take some time and make your yo-yo right now but we're all set and we can go ahead and sew our yo-yo on hand sew yo-yo to top of pole on pillow front so we're going to go ahead and sew it right like this and remember you want the gathered side this side to be the front you don't want the flat side to be the front you could but it's kind of boring we want it to be this side so just put it right in the front. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it down. And see if you can like bury your stitch in your gathers. Seeing a little, um, you know what that, a little loop there, I'm trying to smash it in. And I think I'll do one more right here, then back into the center, and then I'm going to tie it off on the back side. Let's go ahead and tie it off. I wrap it around twice, hold that knot down with my finger, just bring it right to the base, right to the fabric, put your thumb on it and just pull. And that is sewn down. This is, I'm leaving a nice big tail because it's on the inside and nobody is going to see that. And let me put my needle away before I lose it. Alrighty. So now this is what you have, isn't it so cute? All right, we are going to go to step five in our sewing instructions. And it says prepare both back pieces for an envelope style closure by turning fabric a quarter inch to the back on the six inch side and press well. Turn another quarter inch and press, pin hem and top stitch. So I normally don't, I mean, if you feel like you need to pin and press and pin and press, I want you to go ahead and do that. I usually will just take it to my machine and just fold it over and then fold it over again and then I just sew it. And then as I'm sewing, I just fold it and as I'm sewing, I just fold it. If you're not comfortable doing that, then I want you to get out your hot ruler. Let me grab mine. I have a hot ruler and a hot hammer. Here is my hot hammer. And um, when I do this, I like to give it a little shot of best press. That'll kind of hold it into place. And I just like to spray the very edge. I'm gonna lay this down about a quarter of an inch. I know I'm eyeballing it a little bit. And I'll take my iron and I'll kind of just roll my fabric over that edge. And that best press will kind of hold it in place. And then once you kind of have it there, you can pull this out. Give it a nice little press and you can fold it over one more time and you can give it one final press or you could do a combination do that first press and then give it another press but your hot hammer or hot ruler is going to make that so easy that's all in place and um, I do have red in my bobbin and my upper, and I'll just go ahead and stitch this down. I'll show you how I do it this way, and then I'll show you how I just do it on the fly at my machine. Okay, so this side is already pressed down. I'm going to sew right here on, right about an eighth of an inch from this inside fold, not from the outside fold. And, I mean, I could just use my... He doesn't seem to want to catch. If that happens, you can move your fabric forward just a little bit more. And actually, I'm going to use my other sole. I'm going to use this one just so I can see what is going on.
you need the belt to engage. And if I need to go back this way, I can go back this way instead of back stitching. It might be easier if I back stitch on this because the belt will be engaged. So, you know, you kind of have to play around with it sometimes if it's not going where you want it to go. And you can also, I can also throw in my straight stitch needle plate. That'll make it glide across the plate a little, it'll be a little easier. Tuck that back under. Okay, so that piece is done. And looks good. Okay, if I'm just going and doing it on the fly, again, this is my larger piece. I think it's a nine and a half by um, nine and a half by six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start it right here. So the belt's engaged. I'm gonna put it this way, just so it will accept it in. Just back stitching. Let's see. Okay, now all I do is I just fold as I go. Quarter inch, fold over. Quarter inch, over. Uh, can you see that? I'm folding it a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just gonna fold it over again. I find that works just as easy for me. But if you feel like you need to press it, then I would love for you to go ahead and press it. And I do a combination of turning my fabric or not turning my fabric, using my reverse, not using my reverse. And that looks pretty darn good too. All right, let's go ahead and assemble everything. So my pieces are a little wrinkled, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a press from the back side. And you are going to have velveteen little red pieces everywhere. Try not to stretch it too much. I'm just going to... Lay it down just to get the wrinkles out. Okay. So your instructions here say place pillow top right side up. So here's my pillow top and we're going to put it right side up. And um, place back pieces right side down over pillow top, aligning edges and overlapping hemmed sides. Uh, then you're going to sew all the way around it with a quarter inch seam allowance. Anytime you're doing an envelope back, you should always put the little piece on first. Little piece goes on first and you're going to have this, the hemmed edge in the middle. And I would sew to the velveteen. If your velveteen's a little smaller than your uh, pillow top, sew to the velveteen a quarter inch from there, not a quarter inch from the pillow top. because if you are an eighth of an inch into your velveteen, when you go to stuff your pillow in there, it's going to rip. And I know this because that's what happened to me. And I just had no idea that that was going to happen. So I'm going to sew to my velveteen edge, not to the gray edge that you see peeking out. Okay, I would also advise, because I did my first one without pinning, pin everything. Just make sure everything is nice and even. And whichever velveteen edge is further in, sew to that. I'm going to pull this down a little bit and then pull this up and...
And let's go to our machine. We're, get, we're gonna sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna change this one out. Put this one in. And let's go ahead and sew around. I'm gonna start on the edge. And you know that with this foot and with a lot of your quarter inch feet, there'll be a marking that you can follow that's where you're gonna pivot. So if I pivot right, this is where my needle is right here when the edge of my fabric gets to this set, that's gonna be a quarter inch. So you want the edge of your fabric to line up with that. Okay. And it's a pillow, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna be stuffing this pillow. This out of the way too. So my velveteen got pushed a little bit. I can kind of feel it under here. So I am gonna take one more stitch and then I am gonna go ahead and turn. Let's make sure this velveteen, I might sew that again from the back side. I can't see it, but I feel like it's not totally lined up. I'll peek at it from the back side and see how close I came. If it is way off, I think I need to go one more stitch. If it's way off, I'm gonna sew in a little bit. I'm getting a little shift with my velveteen. It's okay. going to clip into my corners. If you do, you run the chance of that fraying and being compromised. Do you see how the edge, let me see if I can get that to show up. See how this, the fibers, the thread just kind of come away and we're already shredded an eighth of an inch in. That's what we're being careful of. So before you do anything, I want you to flip to the back side. Do you see how close it is right here on that edge? Why can't I? There. That is way too close. I feel like that's just gonna rip right through. I'm gonna do another line of stitching on here and I'm gonna use this as my edge. And I'm gonna check the whole thing because that's some risky business. I just learned from my last one where I just busted through the seam a couple of times. If it's a little crooked, I'm going to be okay with that. Uh, just because, like I said, it's a pillow. So it's going to get stuffed with a pillow form. This, I would say, would be as close as you could get. Um, but the other one was way... Whoops, look at here. Do you see that? That is a little bit close for me, too. I'm just going to go... And I'm on the back side now, and it just, it just shifts and it moves a little bit. It's just a little bit of a creeper. Okay, I'm gonna check all my sides. So check it from both sides, from the front side and the back side, and make sure you have a quarter inch seam allowance if you can. Looks really good everywhere else for me. So I am good to go. We're gonna put our pillow form in. Okay, so here is my pillow. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn one side inside out. Don't turn the whole thing. Be gentle, don't be forceful. Because like I said, this velveteen loves to shred. So I'm going to go ahead and push this out. You want to get your point turner. So I am going to be using my OESD one. Um, you have two ends. Little end, big end. Use the big end. The little one 
you run the risk of it pushing right through. And I'm just going to kind of bounce it in the corner. And I'm going to get as pointy as I can without forcing it. It's just not worth it. You've just we're done all this work. So the last thing you want to do is blow right through that corner. And we're going to stuff this one side. We're not going to turn the other side right side out. When you go to put this in, I just go ahead and squeeze them. These, you know, you can, under the penalty of law, this tag not to be removed, except by the customer or the consumer. That's me. So I'm just going to rip it out. I'm going to squeeze this, and I am gently going to stuff this. The key word is gently. This is the other place I blew out my seam. So I blew one of my bottom seams out and I blew out my seam right there too. So I know it's hard to do it gently, but try. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm almost there. And now I can actually try, should try and get them in a little bit more. Okay, now you're gonna gently fold the short end down. And then you will poke out these corners. So don't try and poke out all your corners. You're gonna do the big end first, and then you are going to do the short end, and you're gonna poke out the short end corners last. I'm going to pull this down gently. I know that didn't look very gentle, did it? And there is, and kind of roll out your pillow to spread out that inside stuff. And there is our Candy Cane Lane Peppermint Avenue pillow. And um, final step is going to be to cut all those jump threads. And I was showing you in the very beginning, this is my tool of choice. It's going to have one end that's a little bit more dull than this end. And you just go ahead and put one end under, clip it on the left side, clip it on the right side. Clip it on the left, clip it on the right. Sometimes you have to get it a couple of times on the, whoops, try not to cut that felt too. And that will just make everything look 10 times better, doesn't it, already? Oh, see, there's one right here. I didn't even know. How cute is that? See how much cuter that looks than that? So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do the whole thing, but you're going to want to go in here and just kind of trim it up, get all those jump threads, and you are done. Enjoy your little bench buddy, and I will see you for next month's fill in the blanks.